the Animal Crossing community. When you look at other video game communities, the Animal Crossing community is really great. The franchise is built on talking to animals, fishing, and decorating. It's a really peaceful franchise, and it's true that some of the fans are like the franchise as well. Everyone is sweet and caring, and everyone is always willing to help you out. So with that said, let's get into the dark side of this community. Yeah, this video is going to be spicy because this community isn't all joy and happiness. So I'm going to take a deep dive into the controversies and the problems that have happened with this community. So let's start with jealousy or envy or whatever you like to call it. So some of you guys can probably relate to this. You've probably envied someone else's item before and compare your items to theirs. And I'm a little bit guilty of this too. I've seen a lot of this and it's just sad. The same problem is happening with social media where we always compare each other. And this perspective can be really damaging to our dignity and self-esteem. <clears throat> I've seen many people that have wanted to erase their own islands because they saw an island that was better than theirs. And that's just a bad mindset to have. There's people that feel like they can't enjoy the game because New Horizons is about having flashy and over-decorated islands, but there's way more to New Horizons than decorating. Yes, the decorating and terraforming stuff is nice, and yes, the community is the most vocal about it, but you can also collect items, you can fish, you can farm flowers, you can talk to your residents, you can do much more. What I'm saying is play the game how you want because this game has a lot to offer. Slander. Can you think of someone that's ever been disappointed at the development of this game before a 2.0 update? They've probably gone on multiple rants and slandered the state of the game and ranted about how the game is unfinished and that they're not giving us quality of life features. One example was when people were really upset that there wasn't a bulk crafting system and after all that ranting and complaining, there still isn't any bulk crafting system to this day. And this frustration is understandable because no one wants to craft the same item one by one. Okay, so if you haven't figured it out yet, this is what I'm most guilty of. So let's just get the most common and biggest issue out of the way and talk about greed. Now this game isn't really known for multiplayer interaction, nor is it competitive, but it does have a business and a pretty shady business. If you ever participate in trades, turn up exchanges, getting villagers, or visiting NPCs, then you're bound to run into some greedy people. Now, not all people are greedy in this community. Most are willing to give you valuable things for free or help you, but there's some people that will charge entry fees. If you want to go to an island that has high turnip prices, a popular villager, a valuable item, or an NPC, then the owner will charge an entry fee, and they'll usually request snook model tickets or bells, no, I get it. Some people may want something in return for giving back to the community, and it's really difficult to set up events like this, so you might as well ask for something in return. But do you know a better way you can do this? All you have to do is put tips or appreciate or something, and people will produce certain valuables because they know you're working hard to do this. You do not have to require entry fees, but some of these entry fees are absolutely ridiculous. Two million belts just to enter your island, and some desperate people still queued up for this. Okay, so tips are supposed to be optional, so saying tips are required is no different than entrance fee. Now, fortunately, these occurrences have been less and less common, and they're more looked down upon, and people who still require entrance fees usually get shamed and ridiculed. Now, you've probably heard of the next thing I'm going to talk about in this segment, and that's the black market, <clears throat> I mean, villager trading. You know, charging a ton of bells or nick mile tickets so you can buy a villager from someone else's town. And the more popular the villager is, the more expensive they are because villagers are just collectibles and not someone you can actually bond with and talk to. So this has been other Animal Crossing games, but New Horizons takes it to a whole nother level. So if you're too impatient to get the villager you want naturally, you can just go to Nikazan and spend 400 nick mile tickets or 10 million bells just to get a gray cat with glasses and two colored eyes. Do you know how long it takes to print 400 new mile tickets? That would take hours. You can also spend 600 real dollars on him as well. That is a lot of money for a virtual goddamn cat. If you actually buy this, you need to get out of the basement, go outside, and reconsider your life choices. There's many things that are more valuable and cost the same or are cheaper. You can rent a cheap studio apartment for a month and move out of your mom's basement. You can buy a whole nother switch for $300 cheaper 
or you can buy an actual real life cat that you can actually bond with and have fun with for a long time, which you can't really do with pixels on the screen. People do this with other popular villagers as well, so it's not just Raymond. But fortunately, this trend has been dying down since Nintendo released new amiibo cards to have all the popular villagers, so there's really no need for this anymore. Oh god, I really don't want to dive into this subject. <sighs> I'm not going to explain what it is, and I don't think I can explain it even if I wanted to. Y'all probably know what it is already. So, to put it simply, we all have favorite villagers, but some favorite them a little too much. So, Rule 34 has existed for a long time, and it's prevalent in a lot of video game communities, and Animal Crossing is not safe from it. So, I honestly couldn't care less about what you do in the privacy of your own room, but some people have to make everyone aware of their Anka and Isabel fetishes. Look guys, it's a game about goddamn talking animals, like, come on now. So first of all, do I time travel? Yes, fight me. I don't care. And I'm also labeling this as an issue in the Animal Crossing community, but it's not time traveling that's an issue. It's the people whining and making a big deal of what other people who paid for the game do with it. So for some reason, people are offended at people time traveling. So basically, Animal Crossing is meant to follow real time. So it takes days for a tree to grow. It takes days for a building to be finished. But if you're impatient and want to experience this game at a faster pace, you can go to the Switch settings and mess around with the clock. But if you do that, you declare war. The reasons people are so offended by time traveling is because it's not how the game is meant to be played and people think you're cheating to get items and achievements faster, which could bring us back to the first point, jealousy and envy. If you time travel because you work all day until 9pm and by that time your whole town is basically asleep, and yeah, time traveling is perfectly fine. People are more offended by time travel itself than how people use it because you probably have a bunch of free time and don't understand that some people work during the day or during events. So just don't let people dictate how you play this game. You spent your own money on this game, so just play the game however you want. This is mostly a single player game, so you're affecting no one and this controversy is stupid. This is a thing we've all experienced at one point. We just stop. You don't know what day will happen. You probably don't even know it's happening. You don't know how long you will be away. But there's going to be a time where you will end the game for the last time. But you think you're going to pick up the game again tomorrow and play. But then you forget. And then you get distracted from important matters. And then you find another game to play. Suddenly, days have passed. Weeks have passed. Months have passed maybe even years. All the villagers on your island miss you. You're not just letting go of the game, you're letting go of everyone in the game. So obviously no one holds on to Animal Crossing forever, no one holds on to video games in general forever. We all stop at some point, because maybe the game has become irrelevant, or you're too busy to keep up with the game. This is a natural part of life. Games die out, we will all die out at some point. The universe will die out. Okay, forget this. I don't know why this segment became so edgy. I just want to get back to Animal Crossing after not playing for six months, but Splatoon 3 is coming out, so that's not likely. So that's it. I've covered most of the drama and issues that have happened inside the Animal Crossing community. Now this community is a very nice and charming community, and the positive stuff outweighed the negatives. No video game community is perfect. There will be greedy people, there will be angry people, there will be horny people. And there'll be people who care too much, but all those people are outshined by the generous, welcoming, and helpful people in this community. And this can be said for all video game communities, even the most toxic ones. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.